We're getting through this together. Stay tuned. Okay, so when I said goodbye on my last video, did I think I'd be saying hello again from quarantined inside my house during a global pandemic? No, I did not. <laughs> and I'm guessing you didn't think you'd be watching this, probably quarantined in your house um, as well. So these are crazy times, and I hope that wherever you are, that you're safe, that you're healthy, and that you're finding ways to bring joy into your home, into your life in this very scary time that we're living in. I know, um, you know, I'm at home with my three kids and my husband, and we're just trying to find our new normal, whatever that means right now. Um, we've been quarantined in our house uh, since about Friday the 13th. Um, that was the first day that our schools shut down and my husband started working from home around the 14th. So it's been quite a while of just being in our house, trying to be productive, trying to, you know, not get too discouraged by all of the terrible news around us. And it's just times like this, what are you doing in your life that is bringing you joy, that is bringing some sort of normal to you? Let me know in the comments because we all need tips right now. I don't think anyone knows all of the answers right now. For me, um, we're really lucky to live near um, a city park, like three minutes from my house. And in the center of this park um, is a giant 145 acre uh, forest. So it's really unique for our city and for really the southern part of the United States in general. And I've been taking just really long walks by myself. Most of the people in the park have been really good about social distancing. And right now, there's so many wildflowers blooming, and I'm just taking the time to really appreciate things like that because, you know, it's tough for everyone right now. Um, from, for me, I love my children dearly, but, you know, one of them is a toddler, and he's in that stage where he's trying to climb on things, and you can't leave him alone for a second. So it's just so exhausting to be a 24-7 caregiver. And I know, you know, in some ways I feel lucky to have, um, to not have time to slow down because I feel like the times when I do slow down, uh, I start to read the news too much. I start to think too much, start to get really scared and sad and depressed about what everyone is going through around the world. Um, but then at the same time, when you don't have time to slow down, you know, you really start to feel it after a while. And there, you know, there have been times in the past three weeks where I just feel like I've hit a wall and I can't move. So wherever you are, like I said, I hope that you can stay home, that we can just use this time to find silver linings in our lives. For me, again, the wildflowers, I've lived in my house for about 13 years. And I've never taken the time to learn the names of all the wildflowers. And this year, obviously I have the time and I've learned all of the really great kind of quirky names of all the flowers that bloom in our forest. And yeah, that's something that I can know for the rest of my life. So try to find the silver linings. I know it's not easy. And I say this is a person who struggles with anxiety. Um, I find that Sometimes my anxiety will make me like freeze, like paralyze. And if that is the case for you, just try to move. Go outside if you can. If you can't, um, walk up and down your stairs, you know, clean something, cook something. Let's all just try to put one foot in front of the other. And eventually this is, is going to be a memory. So. That being said, this is a cozy mystery blog, and I think we can all take great comfort in uh, our favorite books, cozy mysteries. 
and I wanted to share with you some books that I've been reading. Some are hits and some are misses, but um, they're definitely books you might want to check out. Okay, first book that I wanted to share is part of the Amish murder mystery series by Amanda Flower. I love Amanda Flower. She is so talented. Um, and this is the first in the Amish murder mystery series, and it's called Matchmaking Can Be Murder. And what I love about this book is I'm also reading, um, she has another Amish series called the Amish Candy Shop series. That's awesome. Totally check it out. I'm reading the second book of that series right now. It's called Lethal Licorice. The first is called Assaulted Caramel. So cute. Um, great characters, great story. She's she's just a great writer. And I, I am enjoying um, this other series. It's based in the same world, which makes it fun. So it's like some of the characters cross over. What I will say about it though, two things. One, if you plan on reading the Candy Shop series or if you are reading it, which I'm reading them both simultaneously, there will be spoilers um, in this uh, Amish murder mystery series about the Candy Shop series. Um, like some characters and their relationships, how they ended up. And it was just like a casual mention in one of the characters. And I was like, oh, now I know. And now it's anyway. So there will be spoilers. Also, um, in the Candy Shop series, there's a mix of Amish characters and English characters. And in this series, um, the Amish murder mystery series, there are only Amish characters. And what I found was, even though like I really enjoy reading about the Amish, um, I, mean, I just find their way of life fascinating and I totally respect their culture. When you have a all of uh, let me put it this way amanda flower writes her amish characters in a very reserved formal way like they're not very emotional um they speak very formally to each other and when you have that up against the english characters who are very emotional and kind of loud and you know um very direct um, when you have those two together, they play off each other really well, and it becomes this kind of fun clash. When you have only Amish characters, though, it becomes very, almost like you're reading a period piece, like something written in the 1800s, like very formal and kind of, I hate to use the word stale, but kind of stale. Um, I still enjoyed it, but that's just a small observation. Um, if you have to choose between the candy shop, Amish candy shop, and the Amish murder mystery. I would go with the candy shop first. Just my opinion. Okay, another uh, cozy that I've been reading. I started this one like last year and I just for some reason didn't, I just wasn't into it. And I picked it up again and this time I just liked it a lot more. I don't know what was different, just my mood was different, I don't know. But it's called A Quiet Life in the Country and it's by T.E. Kenzie. It's a period piece mystery set in 1908, and there's kind of this eccentric uh, lady, um, like, an, like an English noble, you know, gentry type lady, and her maid, and they move from, the, from London uh, to the country, and they have this big manor house. And I'm not too far along in it, so I can't tell you a ton of the details. Um, so far, they keep hinting at um, the lady and the maid have this secret past. And the secret past was obviously full of like danger and excitement and adventure, and we don't know what it is yet. So um, I think it's going to be an interesting story as it unfolds. And so far, I just like the characters. It's it's definitely what we need right now, which is like Downton Abbey meets murder mystery meets kind of Father Brown, you know? Um, anyway, it's what I need. It's making me, it's relaxing to me right now. Okay, something else that I actually listen to this, it's an audio book. Um, if you have the Audible app, uh, I've mentioned before the Bunbury series. 
It's only for Audible and it's only an audiobook. It's by Helena Marchment and I've really enjoyed it. It follows uh, a man who is living in London. He becomes a billionaire, you know, self-made man. Uh, he makes an app that makes him a bunch of money. So he doesn't you know, he lives this very ritzy life, but he doesn't find it very fulfilling. And then all of a sudden this aunt that he doesn't even remember leaves him her uh, English country Cotswolds house in her will. And he goes thinking that he's just going to like sell the house and move on. But he finds the house and the people in the town so charming that he actually uproots his entire life and starts living in this town called Bunbury. And they're really great. They're they're shorter, like they're kind of meant to be uh, just like little short stories. They're not like full uh, audiobooks. Um, but I love the characters, and they're funny and charming, and and all of that good stuff. What I will say about this one, okay, um, like I said, they're meant to be short stories, but this one was only an two hours and 34 minutes. Okay, the average audiobook is about five to six hours. So that gives you some idea of like how short that is. I mean, and I saw that when I bought it and I thought, huh, that's kind of short, but you know, I'm sure like, you know, they'll do a good job because I enjoy these characters. Well, they did do a good job with the characters and with the, the setting and the story building. But I looked on my phone when I was listening to it on my phone and um, it got to like the 30 minutes left mark. And I was like, they haven't even started investigating yet. Like, how in the world are they going to wrap this up in 30 minutes? Well, they wrapped it up in 30 minutes by not doing much investigation and just basically, um, you know, accusing one couple of doing it. And then they ended up being right, which to me that's not typical for a murder mystery book. Usually, you know, they, they think one person did it and then they investigate it. Well, then they were wrong. And then they in, think another person did it and they investigate it and they're wrong. And that just, it brings like a fun kind of story development and character development that just wasn't there this time. Um, I think there's a fifth one and I, I'll probably I'll listen to it cause I, I enjoy the series, but a little disappointed with, uh, I felt like I was shortchanged just me. Okay. One that is my total favorite and it's a new book. So the second one hasn't come out yet. At least I, I listened to it in audiobook. So the audiobook hasn't come out yet. Um, is the Georgia B and B mystery series by Anna Girard. And the first one is called peach cobbled. Oh my goodness. I loved it so much. I loved the Southern setting. I loved, it had some zany characters, it had some great humor, um, it was just really, really, really entertaining, and kind of like a twist around every turn, totally recommend it. So that's what I've been listening to and reading, and I want to know what you're doing, what are your silver linings, what are you doing to find your new normal, and what, and most, most importantly, are you reading? Let me know in the comments, and I hope that we get to connect really soon. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.